So I'm going to treat the one um, on her upper eyelid first. So if you want to lay this gauze, because it kind of drips a little bit. Does this hurt you at all? No. Oh, right there, that's the, that's the, that's the water-filled cyst. See, it has like a milky, milky kind of um, content. Let's squeeze out of it. Just squeezing it out, making it nice and flat. You can even see the opening to it right there. Just going to try to open it a little bit more. A little buzzing noise you're going to hear. You OK? Did mm -hmm. that hurt or just took you by surprise? By surprise? Yeah. OK. It's difficult to work around the eyes for me and for the patient. Obviously, I don't want to nick an eyeball. And for the patient, too, can you imagine you're awake and you know somebody is so close to you and has to have such steady hands because they're holding such sharp objects? See, we can see all that milky kind of substance squeeze out and trying to disrupt the sac as much as I can. But it's tough, it's tough in these little nooks and crannies. And when you have so many and they're all kind of connected. I feel like if we can stay on top of them and get you on a plan where mm -hmm. we can kind of keep them in check. Previous doctors who removed these did not destroy the entire sac. And, and they're really delicate, the sacs that contain these hydrocystomas. So I'm gonna pay special attention to that. I feel like I wanna call them cisterns or like little caves that you can see that the cyst is in. And they're so thin-walled, you can't see the wall. Look, see how that was deflated that? But there's another one. See how there's a bunch of them right here? You have hydrocystomas on top of hydrocystomas. Hilda's case is pretty unique because she has a lot of hydrocystomas. It could be that her previous surgeries have contributed to the fact that they're all now on top of each other.